The Battle of Britain has begun. German bombers are launching attacks on English convoys, ports, and radar stations, while fighter sweeps probe RAF defenses. The Germans are on the offensive, but they've got just 20 minutes in the English sky before they run out of fuel, leaving their bombers open to RAF attack. Meanwhile, RAF radar stations track the incoming Luftwaffe formations, scrambling hurricanes and spitfires to intercept the German raids. In a shift of strategy, the Luftwaffe begins a massive assault on British airfields and aircraft factories, hoping to pound the RAF into submission. Countering this, the RAF sends the more powerful and maneuverable Spitfires up to take on the fighters and the durable Hurricanes to take on the bombers. Massive dogfights crowd the English skies as Luftwaffe fighters fly close escort to fend off the RAF defenders. Hitler provides an unexpected reprieve for the reeling RAF. He orders the Luftwaffe to switch from targeting fighter airfields to attacking English cities. On September 7th, waves of German bombers pound London and flocks of British planes rise to take on each bomber group. For the Luftwaffe fighters, the battle becomes desperate. They must shoot down as many RAF fighters as possible before the oncoming winter if the invasion of Britain is to continue. After September, daylight raids on English cities dwindle. German fighters target the airfields and aircraft factories again, but bomb-carrying BF-109s do little damage. In November, the battle wanes. There is no formal announcement. The Battle of Britain simply peters out. The expansion of the Nazi Empire has been stopped at the English Channel, but the final outcome is far from decided. It will take almost five more years of fighting and the deaths of millions to lay the Third Reich to rest. The battle for Europe begins. American fighter pilots fly close escort for the bombers to and from Germany. Their mission, bring the bombers back alive. But the Germans have the advantage over the slower bombers and their escorts. They hit fast and hard, leaving their opponents little time to react. As the air war intensifies, the Germans pull their fighters back toward Germany. The bitter battle is rough on both sides, but the Luftwaffe can't afford the losses. In January 1944, General Jimmy Doolittle orders his fighters to flush the Jerrys out in the air and beat them up on the ground on the way home. As the Allies bomb German aircraft and factories, escorts attack defending fighters. The Luftwaffe retaliates by concentrating on fighters instead of bombers. By D-Day, the Allies control Normandy airspace, blasting German strong points, bridges and transport. On the defensive, the German Luftwaffe welcomes the arrival of the new FW-190 Sturmbach. This heavily armed bomber killer packs a massive punch, but pays a price in performance. Meanwhile, American planes cover General Patton's army, devastating German troops, tanks, trucks, trains and barges. In turn, the Luftwaffe takes on the U.S. fighter bombers and harasses enemy troops. In January, the Germans launch a massive blitz against Allied airfields in Northwest Europe, destroying 500 enemy aircraft, but at a terrible cost. The Third Reich has collapsed under the Allied assault. The Luftwaffe is a shadow of the force that almost brought Britain to its knees. Allied bombers pound German cities into rubble, and fighters fly sorties from bases inside Germany itself. After six years, and thousands of dogfights and aerial battles, the air war in Europe is over.